Well, welcome to the Church Next Door online. We are so glad that you joined us today. We are excited because we know that Jesus is going to move, that he is still moving here in Columbus and abroad. If this is your first time joining us, we want to say welcome, hello. We'd love to get to know you. So if you would, at any point during this service or even after, you can text this number, 614 412 2144. Text the word connect and we'll get you plugged into what's going on here at the church next door. In just a few moments, we're going to start singing together and celebrating God's goodness in our lives. But before we do that, we just want to ask for his presence to be here and we want to ask for his will to be done in our lives. God, I thank you for this special time that we get to have together where we are uh, just asking for your will, for your kingdom to move in our lives. Jesus, we want to celebrate you. We want to say thank you, God. We want to lift you high for all that you've done and all that you're doing. Jesus, every song we sing tonight is for you. We lift you high. In Jesus' name, amen.
Seek your will in our lives, Jesus. Things impossible, 
There's no broken body you can raise, no soul that you can save. All things are possible. The darkest night, you can light it up.
Welcome to the church next door. My name is Addie, and if you're new, we would love to know that you're with us. Just text CONNECT to 614-412-2144. Or if you have questions about the church next door, you can email them to info at tcnd.org. We'd love to help you out any way we can. And be sure to check out our website at thechurchnextdoor.org. We have resources for the whole family to continue growing closer to God during this time of social distancing. Join us once again this Sunday at 6 p.m. for a live worship service. Don't forget to bring a lawn chair and something to drink. You can even stay in your car if you prefer and listen to the service on 87.9 FM. We'll have live worship and a message from Pastor Doyle. We'd also like you to come for a special time of prayer outside on the patio Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. with Pastor Doyle. Prayers are most important and powerful weapon in these times. We are fighting a spiritual as well as physical enemy, so please join us as we come together in unity in this battle. We now have two special ways we are reaching out to our community. First, join Pastor Doyle for Growing Closer to God on Sundays at noon on NBC4 TV. And beginning August 17th, tune in to WRFD Radio on 880 AM or 104.5 FM at 1030 every morning to join Pastor Doyle for Your Next Step. These are both great opportunities to share the message of God's love and hope right here in Columbus. Share the news with your friends on social media. Tune in to NBC4 this Sunday at noon and 880 AM or 104.5 FM weekdays at 1030 beginning August 17th. Hey everyone, on behalf of the leadership team here at The Church Next Door, I just wanna thank you for being a generous church. So much good is happening right here on the west side of Columbus because of your generosity. People without resources are being clothed and fed. Those who are sick are being prayed for and healed. A new generation is being raised up in faith and marriages are being strengthened. But most importantly, people from all kinds of backgrounds are entering into a life-giving relationship with Jesus. So I just want to thank you and encourage you. Your giving here at the church next door matters, and you are making a difference in the lives of people here, throughout Columbus, and beyond. If you would like to participate in giving, there are several ways this can be done, either through the church next door website, our app, or you can mail a check directly to the church. Let's pray. God, I thank you for the resources that you've given us. You have blessed us immensely. Jesus, we wanna lift these up to you and we wanna seek your kingdom first. God, would you just use these uh, tithes and offerings for your will? God, we seek you, we love you. Just work in our lives and the lives of our families and beyond. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, you got it? Wow, don't you love that? I actually have lived through all those events. That's kind of scary. I remember the, the lunar landing this week. I, I just loved watching the splashdown again. It, it encourages me when you think about you and I are living in a specific time of history. Now, you may be younger, and, and the only thing you recognize from that, that list is the iPhone 4. But see, every generation is marked by certain events. And this is our time. This is our generation. And I believe that God has called you and I to shine in this time. 
He says that in Scripture, it tells us that, that you and I were born into a season, born into a time, because our Father in heaven ordained it. He put us in this nation. He put us in this particular place at this time, because God had a plan for your life and my life. And so let's take some time. We're going to take four weeks, and we're going to talk about our time. We're going to talk about what God has for you and I. I'm so glad to be with you. I hope you're excited. Please do me a favor, all right? Try to set aside everything else, and just let's come into God's presence right now. Let's ask God to help us, to open His Word into our life, to speak to us, to make a difference in our time through us. Let's say a quick prayer. If you would, join me in this. Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now, and we want to say thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for leading us in this season. And God, this is what we're asking for. We're asking for you to give us wisdom, give us discernment, and give us your favor that we might live in our time according to your great will. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you're joining me and, this, and you're newer to the church next door, please say hello right now. Just, just send up a, a hello. Let's get to know you a little bit. If you are newer, like we said earlier, if you'll text CONNECT to 614-412-2144, we would love to get to know you. By texting CONNECT, we can begin to encourage you in your faith. Tonight, I want to begin with Psalm 119, verse 130. Listen to this verse. It says, the unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Now, you need to know something. When I read that, I immediately thought of myself as the simple because that's the way I look at myself. I'm a simple person. And what I've learned is if I go to the Word of God, it will begin to light my way. Just in reading through today, looking at uh, Luke chapter 15, that's where we were reading today, and looking at the Psalms, I felt like God was speaking to me. God is showing something to me. I don't know how you relate to light. Let me give you a little background on me. I grew up in a very rural setting. I grew up in the country. I grew up in the hills of Tennessee. And that means that where I grew up on this big farm, all right, we didn't have a lot of light. At nighttime, when you went outside, if the moon was out, you had moonlight. So it wasn't like we had a lot of street lights. There were no street lights. We just had one pole light on our whole property that was outside. And, and you could get outside of that light very quickly. My life forever changed when I went to college. Because in college, I now lived in this large dormitory in, in a downtown city I was in Knoxville, Tennessee. I know for some of you, you may think, well, that's still... No, there were a lot of lights on that campus at UT Knoxville. And, and I began to... I had to learn how to close the blinds. I had to try to get it dark at night so I could go to sleep. See, our relationship to light is directly connected to our experience. I remember going on vacation once, and we're in this vacation, and we're in a cabin, and the power goes out. And everything was cool for me. I thought, no big deal. The power will come back on. That happens a lot in rural communities. The power will go out, and you just know, if you wait long enough, they'll eventually get it back on. All the young people freaked out. Because suddenly, they lost their ability to get to the internet. They did not have all that they needed. They thought the world was crashing down, all right? Right now, if your heart starts to beat really fast, just because I mentioned that there's the possibility that the power could go out, calm down. It's not out right now. You're good. You're watching me. All is good, right? The reason God invites you and I towards the light is He wants us to learn to trust Him. Because see, in the light, you can see everything. So as we begin this new study, as we begin this whole idea of our time and, and what it would mean for you and I to shine in our time, I want to ask you one simple question. Do you trust God? Do we trust God? Do you really believe that what's going on in our time is in God's hands? Do you really believe that God has got this? 
that God can cover this, that God can control this. Let me know right now. You can just give me a message right now. Let me know. Do you think God has got this? This is what I want you to know. I believe that God has so got this, that God is so well prepared for this, that God is so able to manage this time, I don't even have to be afraid. I can just look to him. And you say, well, how do I know that? Because I've been reading the Psalms, the Psalms of David. He says, it doesn't matter though an enemy come against me, I know that you are my shield about me. See, God is a strength to his people. God is always available to his people. One of my favorite passages of Scripture is right here in Matthew. It tells us that Jesus was with his disciples, and he was up in the Galilee. He was up north. It's what you and I would call the Golan Heights area, north of of the Galilee, the Sea of Galilee. And he's near a huge mountain. And Jesus is with his disciples in Matthew chapter 16. And he comes down... And he's with his disciples in this area of the Caesarea Philippi. And he asks his disciples a question. He says, who do people say the Son of Man is? Now that's really important because Jesus has been talking to the disciples that he is the Son of Man, all right? And now he says, well, there's a lot of talk about me. Who do you say the Son of Man is? Then in verse 15, they give their answer, and he says, you know, some people think he's Elijah, and, you know, all the, all the, the sayings are on. And then verse 15, he says, but what about you? He asks, who do you say I am? That's a great question, isn't it? Who do you say Jesus is? And Simon Peter answered, verse 16. Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And I tell you, Jesus responds to Peter now, listen to it. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. What's the word church mean? The church means called out ones. It means people that are called separate, that that, that, People that believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, are going to live differently. Yeah, think about that. We are called to be different, set apart. We are the church next door. So we live differently even though we're in the midst of a neighborhood. We approach life differently because we know that Jesus is the Messiah, that he's the Son of the living God. And the gates of Hades will not overcome it. The gates of hell will not overcome the church. Verse 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Wow, that's a powerful prayer initiative, isn't it? What Jesus says is that that you and I, if we believe, if any individual believes that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, that that individual immediately becomes a part of his body, the church. That you're called to live a separate kind of life. That you're called to live a life that is distinct and different. Somehow, you and I don't look like everybody else, behave like everybody else. Our manner of living is different. And what Jesus says is that we have the authority, we have the power in this relationship to him to bind and loose. Remember the Lord's Prayer when he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, when you and I discover that Jesus is this Messiah, the Son of the living God, it automatically opens our life up to a powerful reality. We now have authority to stand against the evil in the world in which we live. We have the authority, not in our own right, but under His name, under His authority. Three observations, observations about this passage of Scripture. Look at it with me if you would. Number one, there has always been talk about Jesus. Huh. Have you ever thought about that? 
That there's always been a discussion about Jesus. And to this day, there are still people that will debate Jesus. There are people that will say, well, I'm not sure. I just, I don't know that Jesus really lived. He wasn't fully human. I just believe more in a philosophy that came from Jesus, like, like Buddhism or something. No, that's totally inaccurate. Jesus claims or that he was fully human and that he was God's son. And that's what makes Jesus unique because he's the only one ever that is claimed to be God, to live with us, and to cure the sin problem. So, so why do we have all these other discussions about who Jesus might be? Well, I think that's the hordes of hell. I think that that's the enemies of God. I think that they want to come out and bring out all these discussions. See, I think that, that the enemy of God wants to constantly create lies and confusion so that, so that people will not know. And you need to know, if, if this is new to you, if you've never thought about this, you need to make a decision about who Jesus is. And that's the second question. You know, do you know the truth? Do you really know Jesus? Just today, you know, we're reading in the Gospel of, of Luke, and we're reading through in chapter 15. It tells the story of the prodigal son. That says that he grew up, he grew up with this loving father, and he gives him his inheritance, and he runs off and blows it, and he lives the most ungodly inappropriate, you know what I'm saying, kind of lifestyle. And it's in the midst of being in the pit, in the bottom of his life, he looks down and he sees the pigs are eating these pods and he's like so hungry and no one will even feed him. And it's like, why would I live in a world that is so unkind when I've known what it is to know the kindness of God? When I've known what it is to live in my father's house? And he returns home. I don't know, but if, if, you're, if you're watching right now, and you've been one of those individuals, you grew up in the Father's house, you grew up knowing God's love, you had a, a dad or a mom or both or a grandparent that just poured God's love into you, and you've decided to go out and live the other way, and you know the truth, you have to humble yourself the way the prodigal did. It says that in that state, he realized it was like a light went on. You know, in my father's house, even the servants have plenty to eat. I better go home. Is this your day to go home? Maybe some of you in this season have begun to wander in your faith. You begin to question God. And I'm telling you, in this season, come to the realization that you can trust God. That's the last question or last observation. Can we trust Jesus' claims for the church? And I want to tell you emphatically, yes. There is a historical precedence. You and I live under the umbrella of over 2,000 years of transformed lives, of a move of the Holy Spirit, a move of God throughout the earth that has just changed billions. Listen to that. Billions of people's lives because they believed in Jesus. One of the people that has been so inspirational in my life, she's now with the Lord. She's been with the Lord since the 80s. Her name is Corey Ten Boom. She said, in darkness, God's light shines most clear. How could she say that? Corey Ten Boom grew up in a home that loved God. In the midst of the, the Nazi military force moving across Europe and coming to her homeland, they decided to hide Jews in their home. And for that offense, she was taken to prison along with her sister Betsy and the rest of their family. And in that place, she shared the hope of Jesus Christ. When I was a small child, we went to a camp in it's called the Tennessee Georgia Christian Camp. And we got to hear Corey tell her testimony. This week on our TV program, I'm going to give you a little bit of the lesson that we learned from Corey. Now, let me give you a heads up. I know the times have been changing on the TV program. Well, this weekend, it's back to noon on NBC4, all right? And it will be for the next couple weeks. We've got our time slot back, okay? So don't worry, and I apologize, but I have no control, all right? 
but we'll be on this week. It's a great episode. This weekend, Mitchell shares his testimony and Obadiah from Radio U. And that's the exact point I want you to know. The reason that we, the church next door, you and I, have gone on NBC4 is to shine the light of God in this dark season. Someone asked me the other day, they said, Pastor, how can I help? How can I help in this season? I said, well, I want you to do this. I want you to help me recruit people to watch the TV program and recruit people to listen to the new radio program on WRFD, all right? And they said, well, how do I do that? You tell them that you're part of the Church Next Door media team. And you can do this, all right? You say, hey, I'm part of the Church Next Door media team, and I need people to watch the show. Give me feedback so we can make the program better. And I mean that. You give us the feedback. You take it in. You talk to them. Say, hey, would you watch this weekend? My friend Mitchell's going to be on there. Do you know Obadiah from Radio U? You invite them to watch and then take their feedback. The other day, well, it's been several weeks now, I was out on the patio, and, and Karen Brown, she says to me, my grandmother has been watching the TV program, and she says, tell Pastor Doyle to tell people his name more often on the TV program. They don't know who he is, so please, so I want you to know something. I've been taking feedback, and this is why I now say, hi, I'm Pastor Doyle from the church next door everywhere I go, because we're doing this together. We want to shine in the darkest places. I believe that you and I have been called, that God has called us to a new way of life, a way of life where we shine in the darkness, a way of life where you and I are bold and unafraid and you and I can stand up in this season. I invite you to be a part of inviting people to church. You know, I, I keep watching right now, and you know, we've been meeting outside and on Sunday morning at 9.30. We've, we've been gathering. We social distance, and we just pray. We're praying for revival. You can come and do that. You don't have to be afraid. You can come to, to worship outside. You say, well, well, why do I need to do that? I'm watching online. Well, you're doing good watching online, but can I tell you this? Person after person has come up to me and said, I'm so glad we're meeting outdoor. This encouraged me. I needed to get out of my house. I needed to see some other people. It was good just to be out. And you can do that safely. People are going to Walmart. People are going to, to Home Depot and Lowe's. I see cars of people everywhere. You can do this safely. And we have been doing it safely for over 10 weeks now. You can sit social distance. That's what we're doing. We're sitting, but you can even just stay in your car and listen. Tune into the radio and, wa and, and watch from your car and listen. And you, you say, well, why do I need to do it? David said, I will go before the people and declare my praises before you because you have been good to me. See, the reason the church gathers is that we're a body and we can work together and we can show love to one another. This passage here that talks about our calling and our way of life, it's from Colossians. Now think about this. The book of Colossae was written by Paul to a church that was planted by someone that had never been a part of the church in Jerusalem. That is so exciting to me. I mean, it was started by somebody who heard the message of Jesus, and, and they, he went home to Colossae, and he began to say, I want to tell you about Jesus, and how believing in Jesus can, can change your life. And out of that, this church blossomed, and it did so well that Paul had to write to them. Listen to these words. It's from the first chapter of Colossians. Colossians 1, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. Stop there for just one second. What Paul says is that since we first heard about you, since we got word that this, this church had been planted in, in Colossae, we've been praying for you. We've been asking God to help you and his spirit to be poured out on your life, to lead you and to work in your life. Can I tell you that in this season, 
We've had over 300 people, between 300 and 350 people who've gotten to know us because of our online presence like this and because of the TV program. They've let us know that they're, they're a part of the church next door virtually in that way. Pray for them. Pray for them the way Paul prayed for the church at Colossae. Join me in praying that they're going to mature in the faith, that they'll, they'll come visit us outside. You know, I've already had several come and say, I, I saw you on TV and I just wanted to come outside. It's been so good to be in a safe place where I can worship God. It's so good to see something happening. I believe that you and I can worship God safely in this season. We have all the room in the world out here. God has blessed us as a church. So I'm asking you to prayerfully consider how you can participate in that. Verse 10, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way. I pray that for you. I pray that you will live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way. Bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. Notice how Paul expected this church that he had never laid eyes on, this church that started out of the vision of one individual to share the love of Jesus and how his life, Epaphras tells them, God changed my life, he'll do it for you. And this is how Colossae gets started. You could be an Epaphras in our season. All you have to do is invite people to watch online. All you have to do is is be kind and and love people and point them in the direction of Jesus. Let your light shine. Being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience. You realize that the Christian life is going to require you to have endurance and patience? I hope you do now. And giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. See, you and I can come to know the Lord by watching God virtually right now. You and I can come to know the Lord by reading a book or reading a track or just someone sharing the gospel with us. And our inheritance is just as good as Peter or Paul or Mary or James or John. Your salvation Your new life all comes through the power of knowing Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Upon this rock, you and I are built. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. They'll never win. Verse 13 with me. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son He loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. Can I tell you that Jesus rescued me? Jesus rescued me. He rescued me from the dominion of darkness. Darkness doesn't have power over me because of Jesus. It's not because I'm great. It's because I'm humble. It's because I go before Him and say, God, I need your help. You and I are rescue victims. We're redeemed. Think of that, rescue victims. You know, I watch these TV programs and they say, help us rescue these animals that are in a hard place. I'm calling you tonight to rescue souls, to rescue people, men and women and young people. They need the love of God in this season. They need you and I. It's why we're doing everything that we can. It's why we we continue to to reach out and, and to share the love of Jesus. This is our time to shine. This is our time to show the love of Jesus. This is our time to tell our story. Tell your story. I want to say thank you to so many of you who've been willing to share your story on NBC4. Every time I'll call somebody from the church and say, hey, we're working on one more program. Yeah, we we thought we only started with two weeks, but now we're up to, to 19. Can you believe that? That's God's grace. That's God's goodness. That's God's love that he would let us do that. This is our time to shine, and we're doing it. We're feeding people. We're helping people. But we're proclaiming the Word of God over our community. We're proclaiming that Jesus is the answer, that He is the way, the truth, and the life. If you're a prodigal, come home. If you need God, 
come home. This is your season. This is your time. Listen to Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter 60. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. You think God expects us to shine? I do. See, God has called us to share the light of Jesus. God has called us to tell the goodness of Jesus Christ. God has called us. Today, I was reading through the Gospel of John again. I was preparing for our outdoor service. It's a different lesson, and we're going to go through the Gospel of John, and and I'm reading the story of Nicodemus, you know, this Pharisee, and he, he sneaks out at night. I love it. He was ashamed to be seen with Jesus. He was ashamed, and I love it, because right now, we, we put this on the internet, and anybody can watch it, and no one has to know. You can be ashamed to be questioning God, but it's okay in this season. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that your light is going out. Well, Nick comes into the house, and he starts talking with Jesus, and he tells him how to be born again, how to have a new life. In the midst of that discussion, Jesus gives this comparison of light and why he comes. He said, This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because of their deeds were evil. See, the reason Jesus came was to shine the light and give people a choice. The reason you and I are out there in this season is to shine the light so people can see they have a choice. They can choose the light or they can stay in the darkness. And that's because God loves people. And he says, I will make myself clear to you. And in this season, God has made himself clear. So so how do you and I shine? How has God called us to shine? I think there's three ways that we can shine. The first is that we're a mirror. You know how a mirror works, right? It just reflects. So wherever you and I go, we should be intentionally trying to reflect God's love. The second way is to be a lens. Now, the reason I think a lens is important is because when you apply a lens, you can do two things. Number one, you can increase focus and you can brighten the light on a certain spot. And that's the second aspect. With a lens, you can, you can shine it in an area. See, I believe that your life is designed to reach a particular community. See, no matter where you live in Columbus, that's why we like the idea of being the church next door. Because each and every one of us lives in a neighborhood, and we are the perfect light to reach that neighborhood. The people of the church next door live all over this community. We have people that, that live in Springfield, in London, and in West Jeff, and in Westerville, and in all over this city. Yes, many of us live here on the west side. We live in Galloway, and we live in Hilliard. We, we are right here on the west side of Columbus. We're on the hilltop, and we're in Lincoln Village, and you and I have an opportunity to be a lens and a light in our neighborhood. And the last is what I call a picture you are to be a picture in this season. That means that, that when you, as, a, as, a, as moms and dads, paint a picture of the love of God, as a single parent, teaching your children that God will never leave you or forsake you, when you and I, as grandparents and, and, and parents and, and individuals, we paint a picture for people what it means to have a loving, godly marriage, what it means to be hope, to feed somebody that's in need, to care for somebody. See, your life is a picture of Jesus wherever you go. The question is this. Will you be a mirror, a lens, or a picture, or will you choose to be all three? Say, Lord, what is it I need to be today? Show me, Lord. Give me discernment. Show me exactly what you want me to do today and how. Listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 8. He said, when Jesus spoke to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. 
If you're following Jesus, once you give your life to Jesus, you will always have the light of life wherever you go. If you've never done that, it's really simple. It's as simple as A, B, C. Admit that you've been a broken individual. Believe that Jesus is the answer to your brokenness. And C, confess Him as Lord. Invite Him in to heal your brokenness and to be your Savior for this day forward. Just say, Lord, I admit it. I've been bad. I believe in you. Jesus, would you come into my heart and be my Savior and leader? I will follow you the rest of my life. And that's your beginning. You can text CONNECT and we'll help you get started. Text CONNECT to 614-412-2144. Now the last piece to this lesson I want you to know, this is God's vision for you and I, His church. This is the picture He imagined over us. In Matthew 28, 18, it says, Then Jesus came to them. This is after his resurrection. This is after Jesus has died on a cross. He's been buried in a tomb for three days. And he comes and he meets with the disciples. And he says to them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now, when you and I read that, we think about James and Peter and John and, and maybe Mary and Martha and some of the other people that follow Jesus. And we think about them and we think, well, 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 surely they could do it, but that could never fit me, right? We look at that and we say, well, that's a great idea because they got to walk with Jesus. But tell me this, how much experience did they have in discipling people at that moment? Hardly none. Yeah, they picked up fish and, 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 and bread after a day with Jesus. They had seen him do miracles. And my bet is this, many of you right now watching, many of you viewing me right now, you've seen God do miracles too. You've had just as much experience as James and John. But when Jesus spoke this to them, they were terrified. They were worried and nervous. I got me. Surely there's somebody better. Jesus said, no. If you believe in me, the same words that, that Jesus used with, with, with Peter back when he said, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, is still relevant when we get to here. This is why at the church next door, our vision, our vision of the church is to meet people right where they are the Jesus way. See, when you and I go out and we just show love to people in this season. You know, I was with my mom and dad and they were telling me how in this season they, they, they look up the names of people and they'll drive around town and they'll give them a call and say, hey, we're outside. We just wanted to say hello to you from your lawn. They're staying socially distanced and, and they say, can we pray for you? And they pray for them across their lawn and they just do these I call them drive-by prayer moments. You know what I'm saying? But what it's done is it's encouraged people who feel lonely and afraid and, and far away. You know, yesterday, Jennifer and I, we had to go pick something up, and we decided to eat at this place. And so we're sitting outside, and there's this other young couple not far from us, and we saw them bow and pray. When they got done praying, we looked over and said, hey, way to go. Way to go in praying. You realize that in this season, you can be the light of Jesus Christ, showing someone kindness, calling someone and loving on somebody. I believe that we were called to shine in this time. There are a lot of people that are afraid. There's a lot of people that feel like this is the darkest time of their life. It's the worst time of their life. And I want you to know, this is our time to shine. Let's share the love of Jesus. Invite people to watch on NBC4. Invite people to come with you to worship here. Outside, social distance. It can, listen, the numbers in Ohio are going down. I looked it up today on the Ohio State website. You and I 
can do this. We're doing it every day. We're able to go out and do certain things and stay away from people. We know how to be wise and not to overreact, not to to do something that's unsafe. And I want to challenge you to let's celebrate and praise God for his goodness in our life. I'm Pastor Doyle from the church next door, and I love you. Can we say one quick prayer together? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time we've had. And God, I pray your blessing on everyone who's been willing to watch and give their time to you. And God, I pray that you would speak into every one of our lives so that we would know exactly how we can shine this week. Lord, let us be a grateful people. Let us be a loving people. Let us be a people that serve you every day. We want to live in your purpose and meaning wherever we go. For Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you. Hope to see you tomorrow. We hope you are encouraged and challenged to grow in your relationship with Jesus by this message. If you'd like to learn more about The Church Next Door, stop by our website at thechurchnextdoor.org or look for us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.